Okay, so let's get started. Um, um, I just want to read from Acts chapter 20 and um, Acts 20 and verse 32, where Paul is you know, talking to the efficient leaders, right? And uh, he's he he's like he's seeing them for the fir for the last time actually, like Paul had spent almost three years with them, and uh, but right now he's meeting them he's meeting them for the last time. After that he'll go to Jerusalem and then he'll be, you know, uh, he'll be um, he'll be imprisoned and he'll be put in the house arrest and he'll be martyred finally, right? So it's the last time. So he's actually giving them some very important valid instructions, right? So we'll be looking at verse 32, and he says, So now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. Okay, so after giving them some instructions, he's saying, I'm, I'm commending you, I'm, I'm presenting you. Uh, it's like I'm handing over you. Right? Um, so far, I spent three uh, years with you and uh, teaching, you know, and earlier on, you'll, you'll see that he's saying, I kept back, verse 20, I kept back nothing that was helpful and proclaimed it to you and taught you. Uh, publicly and from house to house and so on, you know. Right? So he's saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm committing you, right? Presenting you to God. I'm just handing over you to God, and to the word of His grace. And he's, you know, and, and he shares about what the word of God and what God Himself will do in their lives. He's saying, um, the word of His grace, which is able to build you up, right? Which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. Right? So verse 32 is saying that. This, I'm, you know, this is one important thing I need to do. I'm leaving, but I'm going to do this for you. I, I commit you I'm committing you to God uh, and to the, His Word, which is able to build you up. Right. So, so we realize that God's Word. Of course, we read, we are refreshed, we are strengthened. God's Word is something that can build us up. Right. And even as we present ourselves willingly to God, God's Word builds us up and gives us, you know gives us or makes access or opens a door for the inheritance, the spiritual inheritance that we receive from him, right? As is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among all the saints, right? So, you know, as we pray and start, let's just say, Lord, um, I present myself, I yield myself to you uh, and to the word of your grace, right? Let the entrance of your word bring light, let your word Build faith in me. I just yield myself. I receive that and give myself wholeheartedly to you, so that they might be, uh, there might be edification and there might be progress in my life, right? uh, spiritual progress in my life. Okay, let's pray. Right? Father, we thank you, Lord. Lord, even as we see here, Lord, Father, we we present ourselves, we commit ourselves, or give ourselves to you, submit ourselves to you, and to the word of your grace which is able to build us up, edify us, and uh, give us an inheritance among all the saints. Father, we thank you that um, there are certain things that we do in the natural and uh, which we fail miserably because it's only you and your word can bring about in our lives, God. And we commit all our area, the areas of our lives into your mighty hands, Lord. And we submit to the lordship, your lordship, and to, oh God, uh, and we esteem your word higher than anything else in our lives, Father God. And may your word, Lord, build us up. And may your word, Father God, um, open our hearts, open our lives uh, to the inheritance, to the riches, Lord, revelations, inheritance that we have in you, in Christ Jesus. We thank you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So we, uh, so this semester, um, Again, two more, uh, two hours every week. Uh, actually, two hours for both the subjects. Yeah, so two hours um, every week uh, on inner wholeness, right? So inner wholeness. Um, well, uh, this deals with um, with the area of our soul or our emotions, and um, and also talks about God's perspective about it. Right? How does God see us? Is God interested in our emotions? God interested in our emotional well-being, our emotional health, and how does that affect our life? Right? Because we can, uh, you know, we can be say we, we can be saying, you know, I'm a strong person physically, strong person 
you know uh, with regard to faith and so on and i have these you know uh, intense desires and i'm very sincere about these things but then if the in the area of our emotion or emotional health if that is not healthy right if that is not maybe the some of the challenges are not dealt with um then that becomes a barrier that becomes a hindrance that becomes a barrier and as you know as as a child of god it can be very frustrating right as a child of god because we know that we know who we are okay because that is what god is pronouncing us to be you know we know that we are sons and daughters of god we know that we are seated with him in the heavenly places in christ we know that we have the authority that god gives us and so on but practically living it out it can be very frustrating if if this area of our lives is not dealt with is not healed is not healthy okay so um it could be with areas of you know we're going to look at some of these challenges it could be you know a self of insecurity a sense of uh, maybe low self esteem it could be anger it could be fear it could be a uh, feeling of inadequacy and so on right uh, maybe some addictions and lusts and all that so um so we we will look at that and see okay what is it that god how has god how does god want to empower us and heal us and overcome these things right in 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 our own lives okay so um let me just share the notes the notes are there in the stream again um for in person class the physical notes um i think will be made available a little later right okay um so that's the scope of the course uh, evaluation and assessment will be uh, um two two graded uh, quizzes right um one in the beginning one towards the end of the course so that's the plan okay okay let's look at uh, chapter 1 and chapter 1 deals with the problems of the soul okay um you just now had the course on developing the human spirit right and we're looking at i'm i'm sure you would have studied about the tripart being that god has created us to be right 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 uh let's read that it says now may the god of peace himself sanctify you completely right so god of peace sanctify sanctify means to to set us apart okay completely and it says may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ okay so we learn a lot of things uh, about how we are created we learn a lot of things about how uh god wants us what is god's heart for us right so all that comes through in this verse right? so one thessalonians 5:23 is talking about okay that man and as human beings we are made spirit soul and body and in the greek we see words like pneuma used for spirit um and then you know suke which is used for soul from which we go we get the you know the whole thing of psychology and so on everything that deals with the mind the will the emotions imaginations intellect and everything right then he talks about the body now what is god's heart saying that let your spirit soul and body be preserved right be preserved meaning let there be no injury to it let there be no damage to it okay and preserved blameless at the coming of our lord jesus christ so is 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 talking about god's heart god's will for every human being uh to be preserved in this manner which means you know we have questions like okay uh you know does god want me to suffer in this way does god want me to continue to you know be in this way god's heart is that he wants this that our spirit soul and body to be preserved meaning protected guarded um whole in christ jesus till he comes again right okay so um another verse that we see is genesis 2 and verse 7 says that god formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a human being okay so that is what we see we see that okay 
God breathed, God put something of himself in us. Right? So that is why we are eternal beings even. Right? We have our spirit, the spirit of man, lives for eternity. It depends where we live or how we spend eternity. It depends on the choice that we make about Jesus. Right? But because God created us in this manner and he breathed something, we are eternal spirit beings. Right? And uh, of course, 1 Thessalonians 5.23 talks about uh, how we are made and God's heart for us. One one other verse which deals with, uh, which talks very clearly about God's heart for us is this. 3 John verse 2. Okay, we will have studied this in our financial stewardship class, right, first year. So he says, 3 John 2, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Right? And in the Greek, the word suke is used there. I believe uh, he's saying, I pray that you may prosper in all things. Right? And he's he's actually praying that. John is praying that over the uh, over the people, over the church. And he's saying that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. So, so when you say pros prosper, what does it mean? Sorry? To flourish, yeah, to flourish, to thrive, right? So it's not just, just getting by, right? So prosper means that let it just be fertile and thrive and flourish and be in health, right? So, so that is God's will for us that in all areas of our lives that we would prosper and be in health. Okay, so so even as we pray or even as we look at our own lives, we can say that okay, if there is something that is okay, maybe in the area of our mind with emotions, there seems to be something that is not right, then God's heart is that it need it can actually flourish, it can actually thrive, right? Okay. So um and also another thing that we see in this verse is that there is there seems to be a connection, right? There seems to be a connection between the spirit, soul, and the body. And yes, the inner man is the real man. We are the inner the, the, the inner person is the real person. And we see that there is a connection. Okay, how do we know that? It says, I pray that you may prosper and be in health just as your soul prospers. So your soul prospering is connected to even us prospering physically, prospering, you know, spiritually, everything. Because we see, practically we see that, okay, a person might be okay, physically strong, but if emotionally they are down, then, then it affects them, right? They could, they, you know, the doctors can't find anything wrong with their body, that's fine, but then they are unable to do the things that they want to do because emotionally they are down. Maybe there is fear or depression or whatever, you know. So, so that is something that we see that it's interconnected. Or if they are down physically, it affects them emotionally as well. You know, we know for sure, right? Right? Okay. Okay, let's look at the soul. Okay, so this course is about that, right? About emotional health. So when we uh, look at this word soul, uh, it refers to our mind, will, emotions. Okay, so we need to have that. I mean, just a reiteration of what we know already, uh, what we have studied already. So it's a, you know, it's it's comprised of our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, and so on. So uh, our, even our memory, our imagination, our creativity, everything, you know, comes out of that, right? So when we look at spirit, um, we know that is the inner man. Right? The Bible talks about the heart of man, talks about the spirit of man. And uh, many times in the Old Testament, the word that is used there for heart refers to both spirit and soul together. Like, how do we know that? You know, for example, if you look at this verse, um, Genesis 6, okay? Um, and God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Right, so it's talking about the inner man, but he's also talking about you know the, this 
ability of reasoning and imagination, imagination and thoughts of the heart. Everything is continually evil. So sometimes it's used uh, for spirit and soul together, right? Like in the Greek, we see that spirit, soul, and body, and that was you know, with, with very strict differentiation. But we see that in the Old Testament, it's, it's used both together, right? And um, and then of course the flesh refers to when we uh, you know that's that's also another thing that we need to uh, think about. The flesh would refer to the physical flesh, physical body, but also refers to the appetites of the body, which are not in line with God, you know, which are not honoring God, or appetites of the body which are not satisfied in God honoring ways or God ordained ways. The flesh. Okay. The flesh would also mean it could be an unrenewed mind. That's also, you know, say fleshly thinking, which means that the mind is not renewed to the spirit, the mind is not renewed to the word of God, and therefore it's a fleshly thinking, right? So, so we see that. Uh, Galatians 5 talks about the works of the flesh. Okay, and it's a not a very pretty list, right? So Galatians 5 verse 19, just before Paul talks about the, the fruit of the Spirit, he talks about the works of the flesh, right? Saying works of the flesh are these. And he lists down adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, everything. And, uh, you know, he talks about those who practice these things. And so it, it starts by saying these are the works of the flesh. Okay. So we're just looking at, you know, all these Different, ter different terminologies and the differences and so on, and the connection as well, right, between this. Uh, okay, so what is the difference between the brain and the soul? Brain and the soul. So, see, so when you say soul, we're talking about mind, will, emotions, intellect. And the brain does the same thing. So is there a difference or is it the same? Is it just a different word? Brain is connected. Brain is connected to the. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, true. Like brain, the brain is the organ, the physical organ, right? It's like a processor. Does a lot of computations. Tells the mind. I mean, tells the body what to do. Uh, processes all our inputs. Right, um, everything happens there. So, when a person dies, the spirit goes to be with the Lord, and the brain anyway goes to the earth, decays, the physical organ decays. But we see that will you know will the person be able to recognize Jesus? Will Will the person carry memories of the earth, whatever they did? And when we look at scripture, we see that, yeah, they did. Right? Which means the soul, which is mind, will, emotions, imaginations, memory, all that, is something which is part of the spirit man, right? which is also has an eternal capacity to live beyond the physical yeah, uh, Nina, yes, uh, brain is a part of the body and it will operate according to what it is fed with. Yeah, So, so that's the thing uh, that we need to understand about the soul, that it goes beyond our time here. Go, it's, it's not the physical organ that we are talking about, right? So if you look at, um, you know, Hebrews 4.12, right? 4.12, when it's talking about the Word of God, it um, for twelve for the word of God is living, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. Which means that hey, it's a it's a very integral part, but the word of God is able to pierce even to the division of soul and spirit. And he goes on to say, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Yeah, so which means is actually describing okay, this is the function of the soul, this is the function of the spirit. 
uh, but the word of god is able to discern what is coming from our spirit man and also what is coming what is soulish in nature right um what is maybe you know when you say soul it could also be unrenewed or renewed thinking right so he's talking about that so the word of god is so powerful it's able to even distinguish okay so you now just to just for us to know the differentiation okay now yeah so okay okay and brain is more sorry thank you anthony uh, brain is more logical more physical but the soul comprehension is going beyond the physical yes that's true yeah so a soul is part of the spirit i mean and this is how i imagine it it's that it's uh, you know it's part of the spirit covered by the spirit and uh, it has the eternal nature to it and therefore it goes beyond our time here on the earth when our physical body is no more and goes to dust the soul will and beca because it's part of the spirit <coughs> sorry it will continue to be there uh, we will continue to have our memory or you know everything there okay then um so the soul there can be you know the it, it, it has many advantages right <coughs> because um if our mind is renewed then we see that our actions are renewed like whatever we do is uh, <coughs> so sorry um, so if our mind is renewed if uh, our thinking is renewed then our actions are renewed we are able to grasp what the spirit of god is uh, putting in our hearts so it has you know it has a very important role to play uh, in a in a believer's life okay so and that is why we are talking about romans 12 romans 12 1 and 2 be transformed be transformed you know transformation is is a big thing is a big change right where we cannot recognize stage 1 and stage 10 maybe you know if you if you say there are 10 stages to tra to a transformed life we we are not able to recognize that it's like that greek word metamorpho which from which we get metamorphosis right so the caterpillar to the butterfly right so it's a very powerful thing and that transformation is possible when we when our mind is renewed to truth because when our mind is renewed to truth then our actions our speech our imagination everything changes right and we see transformation in our life right but what if it is renewed negatively right you see the extent of what what can happen the extent of damage that can bring about that can be brought about in a person's life right so so we're talking about you know these kind of problems or challenges um so yeah so some examples could be hatred depression uncontrolled fear worry or anxiety so these are challenges problems and it's in the realm of our soul right realm of our soul okay for example okay um let's say behaviors and choices if the person has a compulsive behavior okay so it's not something to do with the physical nature but it's obviously something something more right for example i you know came to know of someone who uh who was who had a compulsive behavior to wash their hands right how often do you wash your hands in a, in, a, in a day <laughs> okay so we're thinking okay how many times you know but the thing is this person had this compulsion to wash you know every other minute right is wash come and then felt that he it's dirty i need to wash again go and you know wash and not just wash you know just scrub and wash and so on so leave the house want to leave the house okay uh, i need to wash my hands or you touch anything i need to wash it right so so much so that the hand would be very like the skin would be you know pink in color because it's keep washing keep washing keep washing and it's a it's a very you know i mean it's a very sad thing right so it's not 
always a place of fear. You know, I touch something, oh, I need to wash it. So it's not a, you know, it's it's a challenge. It's, it's something to do with the mind. It's something to do with the the emotional well-being of that person, right? So something addictive, something compulsive. You know, a, a mild version of that is what we would see, what we would call as a, you know, a mild. Oh, sorry, like a OCD or a obsessive compulsive desire, like. Sometimes we, we lock the door and we want to shake it and see, you know, is it really locked? <laughs> you know, or maybe you want to go in the lift, it's already pressed, but you want to press it two, three times. You know, tuck, 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 tuck. <laughs> so you're making sure it'll, you know, go to where you want to go, etc. You know, these are mild things, it's okay. But then, you know, sometimes it can be very, very compulsive so that you're not able to live a normal life, right? It hinders, hampers you from living a normal life as a believer, as a human being. Right? All your normal functioning is hampered because of it. Right? Then there is a problem. Right? What about emotional well-being? Okay, so we're talking about behaviors, choices, emotional well-being. The person has maybe fear, anxiety, um, you know, feeling that in every situation. You know, I'm the victim. Everybody's against me in whatever situation, you know. So, you know, let's say a work kind of a situation. They're there, okay. This whole world is against me. The work, you know, the, the boss is against me, the whole world is against me. Okay, move from that that place, that environment or that company to another place. Same situation over and over again, you know. They're against me. And sometimes we try to spiritualize it. Saying, okay, I'm being persecuted. Right. And the thing is that there's a challenge. Right. Maybe and and maybe it's a low self-esteem or you know, something like that. And and the victim mentality, right? Saying that this is what it is. Everybody's against me, everybody's doing this for me, and I'm you know, day in and day out, this is what I'm going through. Right. Um, and so it would relate. Uh, it would result in a, you know problems when it comes to you know relationships, right? So you're not able to. That gets, um, you know, that gets affected as well. You know, in what way? You know, some people can become very manipulative, right? People can become very dominating, right? Uh, and so on. You know, because you feel, like, let's say, a person feels unworthy all the time. Okay unworthy so they will do something in order to feel worthy maybe in a, you know in a, in a setting with friends or with family they are constantly feeling unworthy so they want to feel worthy so they would try and do something in order to feel worthy okay so it could be i don't know they change the way they speak they change the way they do things and it could also be you know in a way to put down people they say, I put you down, right? And uh, I put you lower, maybe with some of my actions, with my speech, and I say things to put you down. And then I, I'm feeling like, okay, now I'm actually above this person. I'm, you know, I'm at a higher place than this person. Right? Or I have to prove to you that maybe you're skilled in something. I prove to you that I'm better than you so that I can feel better. And Sometimes, and, and, and then when you think about it, it comes from a place of very, very insecurity and which arising from a place of being, you know, unworthy, right? That is so deeply ingrained, you know, I'm feeling unworthy, I'm feeling very low, so I, therefore I do something in order to, in order to even win appreciation from people, approval from people, right? So I do things, I say things, and then and everybody claps and then, wow, today I'm feeling good. Tomorrow, bad mood. Why? Nobody clapped. Right? Nobody gave a compliment. Nobody said any good things. I'm feeling. So it's like a roller coaster ride, you know, I'm feeling down, and then up and down and up and down. So so we see that these are challenges, right? Um, uh, and then it affects our relationships. Okay. Sometimes it could be our life experiences, like constant failure. It could uh, maybe unfaithfulness that we have experienced or it could also manifest in unfaithfulness um to our you know in all our relationships and so on physical health you know, that's the that's the thing what happens in our soul realm or 
with regard to emotions, it manifests in our physical life or physical, you know, like stress, for example. If there's intense stress, continuous stress, it manifests itself physically. How? Lack of sleep, right? Because you, you lie down and you're not able to sleep because your mind is racing. You're thinking about the problem. Uh, you're not necessarily solving it, but it's going over and over again. You know, you're playing that scene over and over again. What if kind of scene? Or it could even be hurt, right? Anger. And you're replaying that scene over and over again. Oh, that person said this. Or it could be even like, you know, I need to say this. I, I need to say this, or I should have said this. And imaginary conversations. I this person said, I should have said this. I should have done this over and over again. And it affects our physical health. Health, you know, it could be in uh, maybe not being able to sleep, and it could also manifest itself in some kind of physical things, right? right? It could be uh, um, maybe some kind of even skin conditions, right? Your skin is because because of the sweat, uh, you know, the doctors call it like psychosomatic, right? Because of the things that are going on in our mind, it shows itself in the body, right? It could be. Um, like psych psychosomatic, which means you know something not it's not because of the physical nature, but it's because of the emotional things, and uh, you know insomnia, sleeplessness, uh, maybe some rashes and skin conditions, etc. Um, so because of stress and so on. Okay, um, Proverbs fifteen thirteen, right? It says, "A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance." Okay, so internally your 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 spirit is rejoicing, your soul is you know, uh, joyful. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. You see it physically. But by the sorrow of the heart, the spirit is broken. Okay, See, it's all interconnected again. Right? Look at the other verse, Proverbs 17 and verse 22. A merry heart does good like medicine. Okay, so internally you're you know you're good, you're thriving. It is like medicine. It's having a positive effect or a healing, restorative effect on your body. But a broken spirit dries the bones, meaning it it is affecting physically. Right, dries the bones, meaning there's you don't feel like doing anything. You know, you feel like you don't feel like getting up. And you're just waiting when you you know get up and it's like oh it's morning I wish I can go back to bed again, but then you go back to bed and you're wishing oh I wish it'll be morning again, you know it's like a never-ending cycle, right? So we see that these are challenges of the soul realm or the emotions, and it's it it affects relationships, human relationships, it affects our body physically, it affects all realms of our life all aspects of our life okay so what are the okay let's go to chapter two what are the okay, any questions sorry before we go forward yeah uh, we've said that like uh first of that our spirit uh carries the soul like spirit and soul are integral, integrated. Are integral and yeah. like, uh, even soul is like uh, eternal because uh, we have these memories, we have right. these emotions. Right. We can feel, but we have we have also learned that even our spirit has the emotions, taste, feel. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, like, uh, so, uh, is it actually the feelings of our spirit or is the soul? Like? Yeah. So that is why. Um, the word of God, having the word of God is important, having a rich deposit of the word, because the word can actually dis distinguish, bring about the discernment. And if our mind is renewed to the truth of God's word, then that processing becomes sharper. Right? Because what is in our spirit is processed by our soul, right? So we process in our mind. So, um, so we receive, let's say, we receive a revelation and uh, is it of God? Is it not of God? Okay, so the 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 discernment comes 
when our mind processes it but when it's renewed to the truth of god's word then it's 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 you know you your accurate accuracy or even the rejection of it happens and that is why hebrews 4:12 talks about the fact that the word of god is able to you know cut sharper even to the division of soul and spirit the intents of the heart and the thoughts of the uh, intents of the mind and thoughts of the heart so uh, you're able to distinguish between the thing yeah okay okay any any other questions um okay so we looked at uh, problems in life which happen because of problems in the soul right and um, so which means that um, so when we address this um, we actually address the problem right when we address this meaning that oh, yeah, this is the root of it so it's not about behavior modification you know many times we try to huh change our behavior or try or at least try to change our behavior right and we and even with uh, you know maybe it's with others we see okay we try to i'm not saying that rules or guidelines are not important and uh, they are important for a you know some kind of uh, harmony in society and so on but then uh if you put a person in prison and then you release them that's not going to solve unless there is transformation change in their thinking and and that is why you know a, a lot of ministry that happens in prison and uh, and praise god for some of the changes that happen you know the the education that that goes on and the people are changed people are educated people are informed and then also you know educated in the sense spiritually so they get to encounter truth and there is a change so in that sense you know there is transformation when they come out then the whole thing <clears throat> changes the whole life changes right so so it's yeah um no 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 that we will look uh, specifically into you know building up the spirit man with the word of god and uh, and also i think praying in tongues and you know all those other aspects of it uh, yeah but here we will look at uh, how to address the problem of the soul Uh, how to be healed of those uh, you know emotional things then yeah it will overlap yes oh yeah i know that yes it there will be overlap yeah um okay so uh, yeah nina's question is while the soul and the spirit are closely connected uh, as they are what goes to heaven after physical what goes to heaven after physical death is it possible to be soulish while on earth meaning without the influence of the spirit fa- spirit man moon swings it yeah definitely it is possible because <clears throat> you know what we actually feed our spirit what we feed our soul you know uh, it's uh, we take responsibility for it and uh, and that is why life transformation you know uh, we we uh, uh, god has given us that responsibility yes our spirit man is born again doesn't have you know he's removed that um he's put to death the old man the old nature but when it comes to the soul uh, god has given us the lord has given us the responsibility to uh, take the truth and renew our thinking with the truth so it is possible to be soulish when you say soulish you know we talk about functioning with the unrenewed um thinking under new imaginations uh under new emotions yes it is it is possible and that's where the problem is you know for the believer you call yourself a christian and you're behaving like this where is the problem here right yeah <clears throat> okay i uh, hope that helps nina any other questions beyond that um yeah if there are other questions um, that is why it necessary for yes true that's true that's for our minds to be renewed by the truth of god's word 
So when there's renewal, we will we see transformation. Transformation primarily in our thinking, which affects our emotions, which affects our actions, and everything. And it's an ongoing thing. And the proof of it is transformation. Yeah. Okay, so um yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. So it's uh, like, so is it like our soul, uh, our spirit, like when we are born again, our spirit is like set apart. It's like like our old uh, man was dead and a new man was inside yeah. of us, new creation. New creation but in our, our spirit. But our soul is not and it can be influenced to both good and bad. Yes. Right? True. Yeah, so when we say um, we are born again, our spirit man is now um, is alive. You know what Ephesians talks about that we are we are made alive. Um, so we are made alive. We are sensitive. We are able to hear the voice of the spirit uh, and everything, and all that happens for the first time. We realize, hey, I'm praying, and I, and it, I know that there's a sense of knowing that it happened. And I'm a child of God. All that happens in our uh, inner man. You know, and it's because of the fact that we are new creations. And yes, when it comes to the soul, needs to be. You know, that is why we say, okay, um, you know, we grow from maturity to I'm sorry, immaturity to maturity. You know, and uh, that's the process that happens of renewing our mind. Yeah. And and the thing is that it need not be a long process. You know, it just depends on the individual surrenders and yields and says okay this is what i'm going to do then yeah is there a possibility uh for a person like uh who is not renewed uh in his thinking or and he was living soulish to make his spirit dead again or <laughs> See the thing is this, right? You um, okay? So let's say you are saying. Uh, so you, what is what you're saying is that a person is living a carnal life, which means fleshly minded, carnal minded, not on the things of the yeah. So actions also follow. So, so rebelling against God, doing the things that are you know dishonoring God, and at, at the you know at, what happens there, you're actually opening the door spiritually. For the enemy to attack, right? And you're placing yourself in a very vulnerable position, right? You're moving away from God's jurisdiction, I'd say. And uh, so, so what happens is that person can come to a place like Bible talks about having their conscience seared. Hebrews talks about that. Now these are people who have their conscience seared. Seared meaning that it's hardened. You know, it's so you come to a place of being having a conscience shared, and you can yourself now that's what Hebrews again talk about that that person can actually reject Christ. So you know Hebrews 10, I think, right? Where it says, um, Yeah, um, if we sin willfully. After we have received Hebrews 10 26, after we have received the knowledge of truth, there is no longer there remains a sacrifice, but a certain fearful indignation. So he's talking about anyone, verse 28, anyone who has rejected Moses' Lord dies okay, without mercy. How much more worse punishment do you suppose? Will he be thought worthy? So this is all that person has done. A believer, right, who has trampled the Son of God underfoot. Counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, a common thing, right? And insulted the spirit of grace. Okay, it's a and it says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the uh, into the living God. And then it says, uh, verse thirty nine. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition. So what does that mean? Verse thirty nine. We are not of those who draw back to perdition, 
but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. Okay, which means that he this person can actually make a choice, consistent choice to draw back, to reject the Son of God, to insult the Spirit of Grace, and count the blood by which he was sanctified or saved to be a very common thing and do all that. A person can go to that place. But can I, so the question is this, no? Can I make that judgment and say oh, this person is not saved now? Exactly. So that's the thing. I cannot make a judgment. So can a person be, you know, come to that place of just rejecting and uh, we know potentially it's possible. But when that happens, can I take that call and evaluate and assess that? Yes, this has happened. <laughs> exactly. So that is the thing. I don't know. I guess they they might you know that. Mm. We go back when we go. Ah, so there are times when we there are times where we'll go back to God and mm. there are times we hold ourselves because of regret or because of pain or because of the emotional mm. being of that person. And uh, sometimes it continues and mm. sometimes they get numb. Like mm. they can't Maybe their heart gets hardened. Or... Hardened. And even sometimes, even if they want to go, they can't able to. Even if they want to, they are not able to because so they so see they, that they, the very they, fact, even if they want to, that's the that's a glimmer of hope. Right? Which means that you know the, it talks about how the spirit lusts against the or, or the how the flesh lusts against the spirit. And there is that tension of whatever is of the spirit, it's against the flesh. There is that there is that tension. So, um, so as long as there is that battle, even it's it's that's hope. Yeah. But even if there's you know like the consciousness is seared, and then for a season they are just living this kind of life, we know that the spirit of God is constantly reaching out. The spirit of we know that the spirit of God is able to save to the uttermost, provided they respond of course but the spirit of god god will always be reaching out will always provide circumstances and bring them to a place of decision but the decision is this but he will always bring them to a place of decision sovereignly dreams this thing the person person may not say but then maybe in hindsight they might say okay this is what happened why am i saying this because it happened in my life right <laughs> Because I was living a double life as a believer, as a spirit-filled, you know, believer, knowing the truth. I was living that, but Spirit of God never gave up. Through the most unlikely of sources, it was always reaching out, always reaching out, always reaching out, always providing a decision. You know, saying yes, no, yes, no. For many times, it was just no, no, no. But then, he's always reaching out. Right. Yeah. Okay, we shall stop here and then come back to chapter two, right? Thank you.